Inflation or deflation can wreak havoc on your personal finances if you don't understand its effects. But not to worry, our trusty time machine will let us walk through the effects during three historical periods so that we are better prepared for whatever the future might hold. Ready to begin? It's the beginning of 1893. We're in the Gilded Age. Imagine you're a farmer wanting to borrow $100 from the bank to buy one of these newfangled machines called a tractor. For the past two years, inflation has been at exactly 0%. Is it a good time to borrow money from the bank? No! Deflation hits. That means that the real value of money is rising over time. When you borrowed $100 in the beginning of 1893, it had a real value of $100. By the end of 1893, with inflation at negative 1.1%, the real value of your $100 loan has grown to $101. Deflation continues, and by the end of 1895, the real value of the $100 you borrowed in 1893 is $108. So, in addition to whatever interest you're paying, the dollars you're paying back to the bank at the end of 1895 are much more valuable than the ones the bank lent you in 1893. Oh, no. Next, let's jump to 1946. Your spirits are high! World War II is over! The price controls and rations enacted during the war are going away. As a retiree, you're receiving a monthly $25 Social Security check from the government. Should you lobby your congressperson to automatically adjust your social security payment for inflation? Yes! You should lobby for automatic inflation indexing. Inflation shoots up after the war, going as high as 14% in 1947. The real value of your nominal $25 check falls year after year, finally reaching a real value of $18.70 by the end of 1948. So while your social security check still says $25 on it, you can buy a lot less with it than you could in 1946. To prevent inflation from eating away at the value of benefits, automatic inflation adjustments were added to social security in 1975. Lastly, let's look at Venezuela in 2012. Nicolas Maduro of the United Socialist Party of Venezuela is running for president. Inflation has been high, up 21% from 2011. In 2013, Maduro wins the election. Imagine you're a resident with 1,000 bolivars, the Venezuelan currency, in savings. Should you keep your bolivars or should you pay high fees to transfer your savings into another currency? Pay the high fees and transfer. Hyperinflation hits and the currency devalues by 40% throughout the year. If you didn't transfer your savings, your 1,000 bolivars would be worth 712 bolivars just one year later. Unfortunately, inflation continues to devalue the bolivar for several years. By the end of 2018, your 1,000 bolivars from 2013 only has a real value of 0.11 bolivars. Bolivars became so worthless that many Venezuelans opted to transform their paper bills into art, giving it a new type of value. As you can see, unexpected inflation and deflation throughout history can have huge impacts on the real values of loans, income, and savings. By understanding the effects, we can better protect ourselves from the consequences. If you're a teacher, you should check out our inflation unit plan that incorporates this video. If you're a learner, make sure this video sticks by taking a few quick practice questions. Or if you're ready for more macroeconomics, click for the next video.